I'm Jared from SnapTech outside of Atlanta here. And one of the things that I have started working on here as of last week was working to automate part of our new client onboarding projects. So what I've done so far is, is just kind of the, the first step in that process, which is going to be the configuration of the RMM tool. So the way things have worked in the past is our project team has pretty much reached out to me to set up everything inside of Automate for any client onboarding we have. And of course, that creates a bottleneck since I'm one person and there's like four or five people on the project team at this point. So what we're doing is we're making this out of kind of a, a form based workflow with a dynamic field at the top where they would choose the client out of Automate. The way we have things set up now is manage automatically creates those clients and automate once they you know sign on the dotted line and get moved to client managed so in this case we're going to go with just kind of a test client here and all the project engineer would do would be select the fields for the different items uh, in this case we're looking at service plans and patch windows and we'll ignore the optional exceptions here and submit the form. By doing that, this would be kind of the data field here in the background. And we can now see that Roost has configured the patch settings for that, that client location. And it has also configured service plans and enabled onboarding for that new location. So once that's submitted, it doesn't matter if the client has one location or if they have 12 locations, it cycles through each. And essentially applies the settings that the technician puts here, so it prevents them from having to wait on me to configure these things, and it also makes sure that they don't get missed in the process because they can kind of do it directly. So this form really relies on right now one basic workflow. So this is kind of the start. Everything comes in from the trigger workflow here, and we call the same sub workflow to configure all of the extra data fields that are used for the configuration. So as we look at those, it's nothing more than a simple loop. And in this case, because currently the Automate API apparently does not fully support um, custom EDFs in terms of updating over API. We're now using just a simple SQL query. There we go. So we're basically using just a, a simple uh, SQL query here where we're dumping in the target location that we're going to modify, the target EDF ID, and then what the value should be. So we're inserting those into that table, and if they happen to have values already, then at that point we just update with whatever the, the value is that we're assigning for this. So this is the kind of the, the first part of the process, which is the base level configuration. Uh, as things move forward, the plan is to add functionality to let this uh, kind of automatically configure or provision tenants and some of the other tools that we use, like Sophos Central, um, possibly cyber CNS once I finally set that integration up and get through all the documentation there. It's just kind of a, a way to help automate part of our new client onboarding project and save some time from that stance. 